Hi all, welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to discuss about my uh, fourth video on like uh, Java concurrency in a new way. That is nothing but uh, how to, what is deadlock and starvation and how to create a deadlock and how to prevent a deadlock and how to avoid starvation. So these are the three most important concepts in a threading world itself. So today we'll do live coding of uh, all the three concepts and also a little bit of uh, uh, theory, theoretical part also. So without any further delay, let, let's start like. Before that, uh, if you guys uh, uh, don't subscribe my channel till now, please like and share, subscribe my channel. So in future, in future also, I'll basically share all the important uh, tech videos on uh, on this uh, channel. Like, okay, so now uh, basically, what is deadlock, right? So situation, what exactly deadlock? Uh, we basically in a dead state uh, where we don't know how to uh, proceed further. So situation where two or more threads are blocked forever. Uh, each waiting for the uh, other to release a talk to release a lock. So think think of like a uh, so in a real in a real world, right? Uh, uh, before that, in an example, how basically it works, right? Consider a scenario with two threads, let's say T1 and also T2. Uh, R2 uh, and the two resources R1 and R2. Uh, T1 holds a lock. Uh, this is the uh, orange color is basically kind of a lock uh, on a resource R1. And also T2 holds lock on R2, right? So, and also internally T1 is calling the waiting for R2. And also this T2 also waiting, calling internally like uh, uh, to the R1. So until unless uh, this releases the lock, it won't happen. Until unless this releases the lock, it won't happen. So neither thread can basically proceed further because internally itself, uh, it is waiting for the other resource, which is already uh, acquiring a lock and that is that resource basically acquiring a lock of parent resource like so it's a, it's a kind of a cyclic uh, thing right uh, that's where uh, we, it's a deadlock so in a, in a real world where can we get get this basically deadlock right so think of in a, in a traffic uh, in a traffic uh, signals right uh, so there are two directions are there in suppose uh, for uh, uh, basically for, ex for example uh, uh, a traffic uh, inspector uh, uh, by chance, basically, uh, uh, shows the green light for the both the ends. Then what will happen? Like uh, it's a kind of deadlock situation, right? The people to be to uh, both the parties will be intersect each other and don't know how to proceed. Like there is a lot of hassle will be there to clear the all the, the traffic, right? So this is how similarly the how deadlock will also be in the programmatic world. Uh, so let's understand basically how how uh, these are the deadlock, right? How can we prevent a deadlock? So there are main three things are there to prevent a deadlock. One is basically lock ordering. So for example, if a thread one is basically acquiring a lock, uh, and also uh, um, if all threads acquire a lock in consistent order, uh, uh, which means thread one acquiring a lock, then only thread two should acquire a lock until unless thread one releases. Like so, uh, it will basically avoids the circular wait condition. Can be so example always lock R one before R two. If T1 locks R1, so in this previous condition, if T1 locks R1, uh, don't uh, T2 must wait for R1. Uh, R1 is unlocked, so T2 must wait for R1 is unlocked before uh, and T2 shouldn't acquire the resource for R2 uh, resource R2 as well. If it is if you following in a hierarchical way, right? So there are there are basically two locks come are uh, T1 and T1 and T2, right? T1 first came, right? So now what will happen? T1 acquires the lock of resource underneath of R1 resource. T2, T1 is basically calling the R2. So T1 come, T1 go to R2, T1 exit. Then T2 come, T2 acquire R1 and T2 exit. What happened? Like uh, uh, because of lock ordering, uh, uh, thread ordering, this deadlock is basically prevented. Like so, next is basically timeout, right? So how long you want to be keeping a waiting state? Like uh, that is not a good idea, right? So once you acquire a lock, uh, you can basically restrict acquiring a lock for a certain amount of time only. Like after unsuccessful release, all held locks wait in a random period of time and try again. So okay, uh, lock for some time. If you if you are not able to lock, uh, basically uh, try to acquire again. Like instead of keep on waiting in a, a same state. Like if T1 tries to if T1 tries to lock R1 and succeeds, and then uh, tries to lock R2. But set a timeout like uh, so inside R1, it is tried to lock an R2, but set a timeout. Uh, if it doesn't acquire R2 within a timeout, it releases the R1 also. And and it basically try again later, like because the other threads are keep on waiting state, they will basically come and proceed. Like so one is a lock ordering and timeout, basically lock interruption. Allows 
threats to be interrupted when waiting for a lock uh, given a system a way a, a way to break a deadlock situation so if we, we can basically forcefully interrupt a lock uh, to be uh, uh, to complete its state to termination state like as we already discussed in thread life cycle right if t1 is waiting for if t1 is waiting for an r2 is r2 and also t2 is waiting for an r1 and an external monitor can one of the threads can be interrupted so i can basically forcefully interrupt t1 t1 dot interrupt so it's it's come out from this uh, situation uh, so the t2 can basically acquire a lock and complete the execution like so this is how we can basically resolve a deadlock like so first is to always go with the lock ordering then time out then basically lock interruption uh i think uh, uh, before going into starvation, right? I think let's see the let's do coding like some coding of deadlock, and then we can go to starvation. Yeah, we have deadlock uh, um, package is there. Let's create a deadlock example. Cool. Let's create a two two locks. Uh, private uh, uh, static, uh, for example. Uh, object lock one equals to new object uh, and private uh, uh, static uh, uh, object uh, lock two equals to new object. Now let's create a two threads private uh, static uh, uh, thread thread one equals to new thread uh, let's create an anonymous uh, runnable method inside the uh, thread itself uh, okay what exactly it will do like let's create a synchronized block i'll explain later about synchronized block but think of like uh, where, where basically lock one is trying to acquire a res uh, resource like so mm, acquiring uh, uh, acquiring uh, uh, resource one by uh, this dot uh, uh, thread this dot okay this dot okay um, thread dot uh, get current thread dot uh, get name now Let's uh, this one basically let's simulate some waiting state in order to understand uh, um, what it will do. Thread uh, basically thread dot sleep right. How much like uh, for example let's let's sleep for uh, five seconds and surround it and try catch one. And now basically it it went into again uh, trying to acquire a uh, log uh, resource true uh, system dot out of Intel and. Uh, um, Acquiring a uh, uh, resource to, yeah, acquiring resource to, and uh, um, so same thread will basically acquire the resource to, right? So let's print the same thing. Uh, so, um, yeah, so ba basically, um, lock one uh tries to acquiring a uh so thread one tries to acquire a, a resource one and also inside that it tries to acquire a resource two also let's simulate same thing uh designed for uh, thread two as well but instead thread two first acquired a lock two right uh acquired a resource two and basically again trying to acquire a lock one inside uh, uh acquiring resource one now basically let's go to let's implement a main method to simulate this deadlock behavior just straight away call this uh, uh, thread one dot start start the both the threads we'll see if the program is completed or not ideally program shouldn't completed and system waiting to keep on uh, uh, waiting state uh, in order to basically acquire a uh, like basically thread one is trying to acquire a um, already acquire resource r1 and trying for r2 at the same time um, so if you see uh, thread one basically acquire uh, uh, so yeah thread zero right thread one basically acquire resource of r1 and thread two acquire resource of r2 but now thread one cannot acquire resource of r2 under unless thread two remove the resource right? unless thread two uh, uh, basically release the re release the lock so it means keep on going in a waiting state it never process this is the kind of deadlock situation like so 
you got the deadlock situation, deadlock, how deadlock, right? Now you should basically how to prevent a deadlock. So among the prevention of deadlocks uh, uh, in the uh, concepts, the first is basically lock ordering, right? Make sure uh, the lock ordering should be correct, correct, correct. So thread one basically acquire lock one and lock two. Thread two also first acquire lock one and then only lock two. For example, uh, if you just change the ordering, right? So first basically uh, 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 only one thread can only acquire a lock. So either thread one or basically thread two. So once it acquire a lock, it needs to be wait until unless the, it needs to be wait, uh, either of threads should wait until unless either of threads should be released. So if thread one acquire a lock, thread one should wait until basically thread two uh, should complete. If thread two acquire a lock, thread one should wait until it, until it basically completes the uh, lock and release the lock. Like. So this will make sure that there is no deadlock. So always basically, we are basically following in a lock ordering, right? So just uh, refresh, uh, just basically rerun the program. So here basically thread zero acquire a resource R1. Now, yeah, thread acquiring resource R2 completed. Now thread, thread two basically acquiring a resource R2. And now basically thread one basically acquiring resource R1. So previously our program doesn't terminate and it's keep on going in a waiting state. Now what happened? Our program terminated successfully because of lock ordering. This is how we prevent the deadlock like by ordering the locks and always make sure that only the particular lock only accessed by a single thread like. So this will help. This is the one of the ways. We have other ways basically time out and basically um, other things are there, right? Uh, what all what all other things are there to prevent a deadlock or uh, timeout and basically lock interruption, right? You can try these lock interruptions timeout as, as an exercise. Uh, so if you have any doubts, please feel free to ping in comment section. We'll discuss like. So in the next concept is basically starvation. Now let's understand the concept of starvation. So what exactly starvation, right? So when a thread is perpetually denied access to resources, uh, because uh, so there are like, assume there are like 10 threads are there. So some threads are keep on basically consuming their resources uh, and, and it and it get constantly get prioritized. And there are some threads are basically waiting to release those, uh, to release the locks by the, by those threads so that it can uh, basically consume, the, it can basically acquire the resources and start processing. But uh, because of more threads, so some threads might be in a more time in a waiting state. So, and those threads will go basically go in a starvation. So starvation is nothing but uh, some threads basically uh, keep on uh, be waiting uh, forever uh, longer than other threads. Um, how it basically works? Uh, think of like considering a, a, a web service, right? Uh, think of like uh, there are basically, uh, there are new connections and uh, basically there are uh, multiple connections will basically come to a web service, right? multiple requests will come. If you feel uh, there are like old requests taking long time and if you basically, and some are basically in waiting state. And if you prioritize the new, new request over like some, some requests which are already waiting state and those requests will basically be in the uh, endless, uh, uh, starvation and uh, new, and, uh, those are basically non uh, unprioritized, right? The only new threads are basically keep on prioritizing. Like this might lead to starvation for the waiting connections as they may not, as they might not never get processed if new connections keep coming in a, another scenario basically uh, think of like online ticket booking system right when tickets from a highly anti uh when, uh, when tickets from a big movie uh, like released for example rrr like uh, any kind of movie released uh, if system prioritized new requests for it may, maybe uh, there are like multiple people comes to be, comes to the selection of a seat but uh, if a system basically uh, prefers the uh, new persons over a person who is waiting uh, due to the, maybe it's a payment issue like uh, fast uh, people who are basically new threads who have a faster payment and they, if we allow them and we ignore the people who are basically uh, uh, typing the payment, which is pretty slow kind of thing. Uh, and they might went into basically keep on starvation to acquire this payment lock, like uh, to in order to book a seat, right? So users who have been trying to book for a longer time might experience starvation and never get through booking confirmation screen. And user who has very quick, right? They, if you prioritize them, they will easily book. So that's where the starvation concept will come. Like uh, with some other threats basically will be in keep on waiting state forever. Like, 
so uh, strategies to address starvation right first is so basically have a fair locks uh, using a fair locks can help in ensure that uh, threat acquire a lock in order they request them as we already said uh, 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 fair locking means if threat one comes uh, next is threat two comes so threat one first should complete and then only threat two and then only threat three so this is how we basically keep the fair locking strategy in order to uh, give a equal priority to the all the threats and uh, remove the starvation situation. And secondly, basically priority based allocation. So for example, if you feel some threats are basically more priority, assign a weightage to the assign a priority to the to those threats. So that if one threat release a lock, that threat will basically acquire a lock like uh, and it will basically get prioritized. Uh, and this will in, this will basically reduce the starvation for a long waiting threats like and also more priority threats and also load balancing request uh, distribute request or task evenly across the evenly across uh e across resources or threats can prevent scenarios where some threats are basically overloaded while others are ideal so given a load balancing fashion like uh like round robin scheduling after one thread there should be another thread or after uh, th after second thread there should be another thread in a round robin fashion uh, this will basically ensures like uh, uh, threats get CPU time and also help the starvation. So mostly like uh, we'll discuss about uh, in, in videos, we'll discuss about like in live coding, we'll discuss about like fair locking and priority based allocation. So these are like different strategies to address starvation, right? Uh, um, yeah, now let's see the demo of uh, threading like. Yeah, now let's simulate the starvation example. Let's uh, first we'll simulate the um, starvation uh, fair lock example. So what exactly uh, fair lock, right? Uh, basically lock ordering, right? So you can go with the main method. Uh, um, okay, let's create a public uh, static uh, uh, final uh, let's say we can create a reentrant lock i'll basically discuss what exactly uh, reentrant lock uh, in uh, later videos uh, re reentrant lock uh. so let's create a uh, public uh, uh, static print method let's print a resource uh, for example uh, here i'm basically have the uh, um, okay try i'm basically locking uh, i'm basically doing a lock uh, uh, um, you can basically maybe pass them pass the message maybe string message uh, log dot uh, after after processing uh, basically after processing right in under, under catch section if any exception comes catch under under uh, exception you can basically unlock uh, so in uh, normal uh, thread right let's create a thread one equals to new thread uh, create anonymous method uh, uh, call this simply print one like uh, okay sorry print uh, uh, this is thread one. Likewise, create a three threads. Thread two, thread three. Uh, and now basically start the thread one. Uh, thread two dot start. Uh, thread three dot start, right? So you can just try to run a program. Now what will happen? Uh, Everything will basically thread one comes acquire a lock and print thread two comes acquire a lock. Oh, sorry, thread two and uh, thread three, right? Mm. Yeah, see, if you see, there is one issue is there. What is basically we put it in a catch block, but didn't any but it didn't went in any catch block, right? We can convert this catch block into finally block now. Make sure that this lock will be always unlocked, even irrespective of like basically uh, try and catch. Um, yeah. Now let's discuss about like a priority based uh, uh, locking to prevent starvation, right? So uh, priority um, priority task um, example. Let's say we have this uh, class. So uh, 
uh, underneath Java basically doesn't directly supports the thread uh, have a priority, but we can achieve uh, this priority with the help of uh, priority priority blocking queue. Let's see how can we define. First, we quickly define the runnable. So implement the runnable method uh, and let's uh, create a, a priority. Let, let's let's give priority private int, uh, sorry, private int priority equals to zero. And uh, it uh, yeah, private int priority equals to zero. Uh, and now basically let's uh, generate the constructor. Um, sorry. Uh, priority let's have a priority and initialize to constructor so can uh, we can basically simulate uh, uh, this priority right uh, with, the, with the multiple threads this dot priority equals to priority now you can basically in the run method uh, you can simply print the output statement uh, saying that uh, uh, the, the thread is uh, uh, running uh, with uh, uh, priority and you can basically do this dot uh, priority and uh, now for example let's talk a main main method uh, mm. now basically how can make sure this uh, uh, task is basically executing in a, a priority wise manner whenever this is basically putting into the, uh, in, the in the thread right that's where we have to implement the uh, let's say um, priority let's say uh, priority um, Let's implement the comparable to compare the priority numbers uh, while while inside the task. Comparable and comparing on like priority task example and implements uh, and implement the compare to method. And this compare to method, what it will basically compare? Comparing between the current priority uh, integer dot compare to uh, integer to comparing the current priority means uh, this dot. Uh, uh, priority comma object uh, this dot priority comma object object dot priority right and in the main method uh, uh, we can simulate this one with the help of executors let's give the uh, let's give the executor service uh, executor service equals to create a new uh, fixed thread pool uh, thread pool executor the thread pool executor let's have two threads let's see what are basically accepting right uh, the core pool size, maximum pool size, and keep alive time and time units in right? a blocking queue. In the blocking queue, we'll pass the priority queue, priority blocking queue. So max pool size is two, and uh, uh, keep alive time is one, and the time unit dot milliseconds. And here we can mention the uh, new uh, priority blocking queue, right? So that will basically do the job. So if you if you basically do the for loop parent i equals to zero and i less than then let's take integers as a priority number this uh, I, have, I value as a priority number if executed service dot let's execute the don't worry about what is this executed service and execute just think of like a here i am basically can pass the runnable uh here if you see it will basically accept the runnable right so here i'm basically passing this this run method so nothing but i'm basically doing a new priority task example and passing the priority so once I done with all the priorities and basically I can shut down a uh, uh, service once it, everything is completed. If you execute now, you might not see the order like nine eight seven six five four three one because uh, at a max we have only two pole sizes there. So two threads. Whenever the zero and one basically comparing, it will try to basically allocate the highest priority first. That's why if you see like three will get the least priority. Uh, you can basically do multiple times. It also depending on your uh, uh, system as well. Um, So if we see eight and uh, when it comes to eight and six, eight took the highest priority. And similarly, when it comes to four and three, four took the highest priority over three. So yeah, this is how basically how uh, priority blocking priority blocking queue is helping to basically uh, two and zero. Like uh, here, if you see uh, one, two takes high priority over zero, right? So uh, this pre this integer comparing integer is basically comparing uh, the between the this priority and the object priority. And uh, if it is this greater than, it will basically increment the one, right? Depending on that, our priority blocking queue will basically taking care of uh, assigning that thread is early uh, over this thread. So this is the basically how we basically uh, strategies to address the starvation. One is basically fail locking 
and priority based allocation uh, and load balancing and round robin scheduling as well. Uh, so this is how overall what is basically deadlock and starvation. These two are more important concepts. Uh, please practice. Uh, if you have any doubts, please feel free to ping in comment section. And then next video will basically discuss about like uh, threat safety. So we'll soon meet in the next video. Uh, if you like the video, uh, please like and subscribe and share to your friends. Uh, that is the only thing you can do for me to motivate today to do more videos. We'll soon meet in the next video. Till then, bye-bye.